Hey YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Welcome to my review for the seventh episode of Beast Morphers' second season. I believe it's called Beast X King Rampage. And as you can tell by this name, Beast X King finally made its debut. And I thought it was a really good episode. Another one of the strongest episodes of the season. I think both major debut episodes, which was this one and then the Powered Custom debut, were the strongest ones of the season so far. And there was a lot I liked about this episode but in terms of the way they debuted and the way they had little details. Um, so to start, we find out that the Beast X King Zord was actually not developed specifically by our grid battle force, but was being developed by um, the general guy that's Ben and Betty's dad and the mayor and like the general government of that, I guess, uh, to guard the Morphex Towers. Like this was the first one and their intention was to make a bunch of these to guard all the Morphex Towers as the Morphex business is expanding. I really liked that idea. Obviously at the end it didn't happen and they're like, oh, because of this dangerous thing, the Beast X King Zord is now yours. But I thought that was a cool idea because it kind of plays off of one of the elements I really liked about the start of Beast Morphers was, you know, with Morphex coming from the morphing grid and how the whole like general uh, idea of the morphing grid and Power Rangers sort of impacting the world I thought that was a really cool element and this was like another one of it of like them actually creating their own zords to guard the morphex towers and I like seeing it affecting and changing the world and I thought that was a really cool idea like I don't see why that couldn't happen at the end of the series where they do create more or even they could have even done that now honestly they could have still had them create more to guard and then just have grid battle force um, oversee it so they don't have any problems like they did with this and then obviously they would get their own one because it's not as if we had to see them like I wouldn't even care if we never saw one of them guarding a Morphex tower I just like the idea of them being out there uh, because like again I, I like that mythology idea I feel like I went on too long about that but the point is I thought that was a really cool idea but we find out like well how did you build a zord and then he's like a friend of a friend connected me to the morphing grid I'm like oh wait that was RJ we find out that Megan! Yes, they brought back Megan, who was the sort of antagonist character for Nate and Zoe in an episode last season when she found out that they were sort of dating, almost dating, and blackmailed them so that she could basically steal Nate's job. And I, everyone thought, or ever, by everyone I mean me, but I don't know about everyone else, but they thought that she might have been, you know, under a spell, or they, you know, usually, what I guess what I'm trying to say is, usually in a Power Rangers episode, they'd be under a spell, or a villain in disguise, but she was just straight up for the B from Grid Battle Force 23. Uh, and in this episode, though, she was, like, redeemed and trying to prove herself, but that was a cool idea. I really loved that they brought her back. I thought she was a good adversary character back in that episode, but I like when they do that, when they bring back a filler character, um and make it count. Because usually, especially in recent years in Sentai, we're like, oh, we meet all these characters that don't matter, and we're never going to see them again. And so I like that. It showed a nice sense of continuity, which is something else the Power Rangers has been lacking for the last few years is, um, well, just general continuity. It's like they're afraid that kids aren't going to remember something that happened. And so I like that they brought her back. I mean, I'm mixed on the idea of her being fully redeemed. I kind of liked her as just a bad person. Like, there's a lesson to teach. Some people are just awful. But regardless, I like that they brought her back. I think it might have been more interesting if she was, like, almost a mix where she wasn't fully as, like, evil as she was when we first knew her, but she wasn't 100%, like, all of a sudden super nice. Like, she still had an attitude. Like, I think it would have been more interesting for Nate to have to truly work with someone he didn't like to help this situation and she was still kind of the worst. But again, regardless, I really appreciate the fact that they brought her back in general. Nice callback and continuity to the previous season. And it made sense that she would have knowledge of like Zord technology, specifically sort of DNA, animal DNA and Beast Morphers related. So that was a cool bit there. But so, you know, they're showing it off. And we t it turns out that the plan of Evox he's been working on was to have Nate help create a virus to control this because he has first-hand knowledge of this Zord since he's disguised as the mayor. Now, I don't know whether this idea was in development regardless of him being Evox and he's just like, oh, hey, they're developing a Zord, I'm going to control it, or if he pushed it for this Zord to be created. I kind of prefer the idea that it was the, the government's idea just because I think, it's, again, it's cool to have the idea of them creating their own Zord because the world's being affected by it. But regardless of whether he pushed the idea or not, I like that idea of him. I said the word idea just a lot just now, and I apologize. But I like the 
concept, there we go, of him using his uh, cover as Mayor Daniels to get this infight of, infight, inside information and use it to his advantage. So that's what he was trying to do. Blaze and Roxy fire, basically a virus arrow at it. And it's pretty dumb that, that I almost said Roxy, that Megan's like, oh, I never could have foresaw a virus taking over this machine, even though our main enemy in the world right now is this computer virus named Evox. And it's like she was going to put up like computer virus firewalls and she's like, oh, I don't need it right now. It'll be fine. It's not as if our main enemy is the computer virus that takes over things. So that was pretty dumb. But so that's what happened. It goes on a rampage. They have to stop it. And in order to ultimately stop it, they basically need to install their own counter arrow, like D-virus or whatever. And the way they do that is they use the Beast Expo, which they've been working on. I actually like that. I usually don't like when they double debut things because I feel like, you know, stretched out a little bit. But this made a lot of sense. They previously set up Nate working on this in the background, which is, again, something I've mentioned I like in Beast Morphers is they'll often have... Nate or somebody working on a gadget in the background that we'll see before it debuts and it gives this nice sense of progression to it. And so that was already established and he even wasn't done working on it and it had like the gorilla and rabbit designs on it and presumably it would have originally been Cheetah but then they made it Lion to work with this. So I thought, thought it was a cool way to debut it and a good reason why it would be Beast X King related uh, so that they save it but then of course they have to do another mecha battle and so as they're fighting on the ground Blaze brings his mecha in, and we get to debut Red using the mech. Although, technically, within universe, he shouldn't have had to, because since it's supposed to be a Guardian bot, it should be able to work on its own. But obviously, we know Red pilots this mecha. And then we got a look at the, the steering wheel weapon, which will come into play later, and the day is saved, and then at the end, they give Grid Battle Force control of the Zord, and they don't call the Beast X Morpher the Morpher, they call it, like, the control box, or the activation box, or um, whatever. And... It does look different. We saw this in the trailer. Um, I didn't want to mention it until we saw it in the show in case it changes and maybe it will. But it doesn't look like the, the toy. It has like the head of the toy. It almost looks like if the toy was smaller and you attached it um, onto the regular Beast Morpher or the Beast X Morpher without like the watch part. So it attaches onto the sunglasses part. Almost seeming in a way like the sunglasses attachment where it's an attachment. So that's weird. That's one of the first main things I can think of that doesn't look like it does on toy shelves. So that's strange. Again, there's a very small chance they could change it later for whatever reason so it looks closer to it. But that's just kind of a small nitpick to that there. Um, and then they say, you know, we're glad Megan's redeemed, and we hope to work with her in the future, and um, I do hope she comes back. I think, even if for just for one episode, I think it would be cool to bring her back for future debuts, because obviously we're going to have um, Beast X King's going to combine with the yellow and blue zords, taking the place of red, and then can take the place of the ultra zord formation. I presume that something like the formation with like red and yellow, or blue and yellow, will happen soon, so I don't necessarily think they would bring her back for that, but there's potential to bring her back for stuff that's Beast X King related. I guess it doesn't even need to be Beast X King related, but it just makes sense. Like, you have the formations with the Megazord, and you also have the steering wheel console, becomes a blaster weapon, as I mentioned, in Go Busters, so I can imagine her working on that. So I think it would be cool to have her come back on stuff related to this when they're working on it. Or maybe that um, Beast X King power-up mode we're going to see. We saw that at Toy Fair and stuff like that. So um, Overall, though, I thought this was a very strong episode. A strong concept for the debut of Beast X King. I love the idea of how it debuted, the progression of how it debuted. I love that they brought back a previous character that fit in with the mythology. I loved using Mayor Daniels' disguise connections and stuff like that. I thought it was very solid. My only negatives about the episode was the humor yet again. And again, it's not necessarily that I'm against humor, but Beast Morphers, um, and, and even Ben and Betty I'm more endeared to in the first season compared to stuff like Vicar, Vicar, um, to David Vickers, no, to Victor and Monty. Um, but Beast Morphers, I think, biggest problem with humor, other than it being outdated 90s humor, um, but the other biggest problem is the timing. Like, the beginning of the episode had a bit where their dad's like, oh, I'm going to show you what we've been working on, but then it's like accidentally a recording of him recording his kids doing karate, which is a little bit of a conceptual, like, funnier bit than Ben and Betty for the thousandth time being like, whoa, we fell over! But... And the, it just didn't feel right tonally. It like broke up, they're like, we're going to debut this big new thing. But first the comedy bit. And it just, it breaks up the momentum. And then at the end too, they always feel like they need to end on a comedy bit. I don't know why. 
they did this thing where they have the, the virus arrow and Ben sets it down saying, we better dispose of this carefully. And he sets it down and the camera focuses on it. And I thought, oh man, Mayor Daniels is going to come back in and steal that. It's going to come back in another episode. Nope. It was them accidentally being idiots and infecting Steel's legs. I don't know why it wouldn't just infect all of Steel, considering it affected the entire robot, but whatever. But it's kind of a small complaint, but it, it adds up. And again, my biggest problem with their humor is it uh, ruins the flow and tonally doesn't work. It reminds me, um, especially of the best example of this from last season, was after Devin was trapped in the cyber dimension. They're like, oh man. We're really worried about Devin. We gotta get this gate fixed to get him back. And then Ben and Betty are like, Whoa, we turned ourselves wobbly! It's like, this isn't a time for that. That totally ruins the tone of the moment. So that's their biggest problem with that, in my opinion. But what did you guys think of the Beast X King debut? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Did you not? Let me know in the comments, as always. I believe next week will be our mid-season finale. Uh, episode 8 is usually where we leave off, so we'll see how uh, that goes in terms of leaving off in a big sense, if, if not, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, until next time, before you like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps, and ring that bell so you can get notifications for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.